In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a tuna can and turn it into a snuff cap and a simmer ring for the Luxata titanium alcohol stove. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, keep watching. All right, a little background story just before we get started. Not long ago, I made a video where I reviewed the Luxata titanium alcohol stove. And I also demonstrated how I used a modified tuna can as a snuff cap and as a simmer ring. And if you're interested in seeing that video, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video as well as in the video description below. But I had planned on doing in that video was showing you how I had modified those tuna cans to make the simmer ring and the snuff cap, but it was going to be too long in that video. So what I decided I would do is make a second video just on how to make the snuff cap and the simmering. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll take you down to the tabletop I'll show you a couple of completed versions of this, and then I'll show you two ways, or at least two ways, that you can go about making your own. All right, quickly, let's just recap why you would even want to create a snuff cap or a simmer ring for the Luxata titanium alcohol stove. So as I demonstrated in that previous video, this is a quite a high performance little stove. It comes to a bloom quickly once ignited, it'll boil your water very quickly, and almost as quickly it'll run out of fuel. So it's a very hot operating little stove, which is great for boiling water, but not so good for simmering. So the first thing I wanted to be able to do was to extinguish the flame so I could allow it to cool down and then pour any excess alcohol that I had remaining back into a container. So that's where I took one of the tuna cans and simply cut the bottom off of it, put a little uh, holding piece on, I'll demonstrate how that's made in a few minutes time, and then I can just set it down over top of the alcohol stove and it does the job. What about simmering? Well, in order to simmer, I needed to create something that would allow flame to come through. So I took another tuna can and I created one with a hole in it, and I'll demonstrate how that can be done. And now I can reach in and put that in on top of the alcohol stove, and it will dampen the flames down considerably, thereby reducing the heat, allowing for a simmer, and extending the burn time as it does, won't consume the alcohol quite as quickly. All right, so let me demonstrate how you can take one of these tuna cans and turn it into either a simmer ring or a snuff cap. All right, the first step in preparing your tuna can to turn it into either a snuff cap or a simmer ring is to decide where you're going to cut it off on this outside edge and then create a line, a cutoff line there. Now, for me, the easiest way to do that is to use a Sharpie and something that will raise the Sharpie to the level you want. This is just a piece of cardboard. It's just about the perfect height for this. And I just bring the can into the Sharpie run the can around until I've gone completely around the outside of the tuna can and now you can see I have a cutoff line at exactly the height I want it to be when I'm finished. So that's step number one. Now if all you're going to create is a snuff ring then that's all you're going to have to do. Now you're ready to go on to the next step of cutting off this portion of it. But if you're going to create a simmer ring then the next step would be to find the center for of the uh, bottom of the can. Now there are a number of ways you could do that certainly you could use a ruler, measure across a few different places, create little lines. Eventually it'll cross over where the center is and there's other ways I'm sure of finding the center. I'm very fortunate I have a device called a center finder and if you haven't seen one of these things before I picked this up at Lee Valley here in Halifax but it's it's ideal for finding the center of anything round. So what I have is a series of concentric rings moving out from the center with dots that you can use for marking and they move out in half inch segments and what you do is you lay the center finder on top, try to find the circle that most closely matches the, the, the item you're measuring, hold it in place, take your sharpie or whatever else and put a dot in the center hole and when I'm done. You can see now I have the center of the bottom of this can marked. 
and I'm ready to go. So once that I have that done, now I am going to create a pilot hole. So I'm going to use a punch to create this pilot hole. This is soft metal. It's, it's, it is steel, but it's quite soft and quite thin. So it doesn't take a whole lot to punch through. You could use a drill and work your way up in drills, but for me, it's just as easy to take my punch. And I'll tell you, you can do this by hand. You just push a little bit, and it's going to create the hole for the next step. So I've created a pilot hole, as you can see. So that's all I want. I don't want this pilot hole to be any bigger than that right now. Now, from here on in, there is a couple of methods that you could use for one, cutting out the hole that you want, the size that you want, as well as cutting off the outside. I'm going to set it up in a minute and show you the tools that I use because I have them. If you don't have the tools that I'm going to use, then there are any number of ways you could do this. You could, with patience, take a hacksaw and cut your way around the blade. It will work. I have done it. It does take patience. It, actually, the hardest part is getting it started until you make the first entrance through the metal, and then you can work your way along. But just take your time, and you will be able to do it with a hacksaw. Easier than that, of course, would be to use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and just move your way around the outside with the Dremel tool until you get a cutoff to the right height. You can even use metal shears and just come in from the side and work your way down to the line and cut it just like it was a piece of paper. Metal shears will do this quite easily with this metal because, as I mentioned, it's quite thin. So that's a couple of ways for cutting it off to the height that you want. Now, if you don't have the tool that I'm about to show you for cutting the center hole, then again, you can do that a couple of ways. And one way it would be to measure and mark the diameter that you want on, on from the center hole out. And then use those same shears to work your way out and create a series of lines coming out from the center that would end up being star-shaped. And then taking a pair of pliers and working the metal back and forth until it eventually fatigues and knock, uh, it falls off. Now the uh, challenge with that, of course, is now you have ragged edges all the way around the outside. So you'll end up having to take a file or if you have it, a Dremel tool with a sanding stone and you can smooth off the edges around the outside. What I'm going to do though, because I have these tools and I find them very effective for this purpose, is I'm going to use a step drill, and I'll show you how I'll use that in a moment, and a cutoff wheel. And I'm going to use these in combination with a drill press. If I didn't have a drill press, you still could use both of these tools with a hand drill. The step drill works very easily. It's very easy to work with a hand drill and the step drill to cut it out. Not so easy to use this with a hand drill. It can be done of holding it, but you end up using two hands to try and uh, cut the metal like this. Because I have the drill press, that's what I'm going to use. So it'll take me a minute to get that set up. All right, so I have my drill press set up on my table here, and I have my step drill inserted and tightened into the chuck. And if you haven't worked with a step drill before, they're really quite cool. They do come in various sizes and diameters and that, uh, you know, different for different purposes, of course. But what happens is with each penetration of the step drill, you cut to a different diameter and there are markings in this shelf right here that indicate what diameter I'm at with each of the shelves or each of the steps. So one and a quarter is right up here. It's the second last of the shelf. So I know I have to come down to that depth. So I need to make sure that I'll have enough travel room underneath on the uh, platen here uh, to make sure I don't bottom out. And I have my center hole lined up here and so I am ready to go. All I need to do now is use my safety equipment which of course is eye protection and ear protection. Eye protection is absolutely essential. You are working with metal here and a small sliver of that steel in your eye will kind of ruin your day. So let me put my ear protection on. All right so I will work my way down might take a couple of drops to get it down to the right height, and we'll go from there. All 
All right, there's the completed hole. Now it is not perfectly centered, but that's okay. Probably what happened is, is when I pushed my center punch through, I moved off of that center point slightly and didn't get a perfect lineup, but I'm oh, maybe a millimeter off centered and that's fine because it won't perfect affect performance at all. All right, now I'm gonna have to reset up, do a little clean up here, reset up and you set up to use the cutoff wheel. All right, as you can see, I've replaced my step drill with my cutoff wheel. And if you haven't used these cutoff wheels before, this is virtually identical to a cutoff wheel that you might use with an angle grinder, except smaller in diameter, and it's intended to be used either with a drill press or a drill. Either one will work. So I have set the platen to the height where I'm touching the side of the cutoff wheel right to the cutoff line that I have on the can. And what I'll be doing is I'll be just slowly and very controlled uh, rotating the tuna can around the outside until it cuts through. All right, once again, safety precautions. I have my gla uh, safety goggles on. I am using my hearing protection. And we'll get it started. All right, I have separated the simmer ring from the base of the can. Now we can go on to the next step. All right, there we are. We have the bottom, or what was the top of the tuna can, separated from the bottom. So we're getting pretty close to being finished here. So you can see I have the diameter hole that I wanted in the bottom. I have it cut off to the height that I wanted. Now, the work that we just did did result in a lot of rough edges. Now, not extremely rough edges, but there are wires of metal all the way around the outside edge here as well as on the inside diameter there. So to knock those down, it just takes a few moments to take a few grades of sandpaper. Um, I, if you start rough, it just speeds things up a little bit and just rotate it around. And those wire edges will start to come off. And as you have the bigger pieces um, knocked down, You can see some of them have come off here already. Now then you can go move down to, or up to a finer grade of sandpaper. Oh, much better. We're almost almost there already. And then you can move into an even finer grade of sandpaper. Checking the edge, that's pretty good at this point. I don't think I'll go any finer in sandpaper. I may just take the paper and work my way around the inside and outside edge there, just in case there's any wires left around. That's pretty good. I might do a little bit more touch up in a few minutes. I think I've gotten most of the wire edges off now. All right, the same thing needs to be done on the inside of this di diameter hole. So you, a couple of ways you could do that. You could wrap it in your finger or just wrap it up like this and work your way around. Alternatively, you could take a Sharpie or a piece of doweling or something and wrap it around the outside of that doweling and just Take your time to go around the inside, knocking down the edges, checking to make sure you're happy with what you have. 
Yeah, they're coming off. They're coming off. It does take a bit of time to do that. Uh, alternatively, if you do have a Dremel tool and you have a, a sanding stone, you can just run the sanding stone around the inside a few times and it'll take any wire edges off and uh, it'll be just as effective. Okay, so I'm just going to work on that for a minute or two to get the wire edges down to a point where we'll knock them off and get the edges to a point where I'm happy that I'm not going to cut myself on them and then I'll bring it back. All right, I took my time and worked with the various grades of sandpaper. I believe I got down to 400 grit wet dry sandpaper and knocked off all the wires, all the edges. There are no sharp edges left that can cut me. So now we're ready to put the finishing touches on this. And what we have to do now is attach some means of holding on to this simmer ring so that we can drop it on top of the alcohol stove without getting burnt, of course. So there are a couple of ways of doing that. Originally, what I had done is taken a piece of this aluminized duct tape, and that's what this is. It's a thin layer of aluminum plasticized aluminum with a peel back uh, backing on the outside of it and cut a piece so that I could attach it right on the edge. So this piece still has the backing on it, but if I pull the backing off, I could create a piece like this, reach down and it would attach to the outside. And that works. The only challenge I have with using this is that if it's in a wood stove that has a little bit of depth, it's hard to get in without getting your fingers burnt to drop that down. So the alternative was to create something that had a bit of a lever, not unlike what you might see on one of the Trangia knockoffs. And we'll talk more about this in a minute, but I wanted to create something like this with a lever that I could use to reach down inside of the wood stove. So it's very easy. All I did is took some copper wire, could be any wire, of course, and formed a rectangle out of it. And we have a piece of aluminized tape here that I'm gonna peel, put inside of this a little contraption of mine, a little lever. I want to put the lever, the inside edge of this lever, as close to the center as I can, but still have enough of a shelf for this tape to stick on. So somewhere around here. You can see where I've got it there push down the aluminized tape. Now, I don't need all of that tape for this to work. In fact, I'm probably, I wonder if I, yeah, I can just tear it off, of course. Get it off my fingers. And same thing underneath. If I left it on, it'll probably, well, I don't know that it will melt. I haven't had an issue with it, but uh, I'm just gonna pull it off at the edge right here. So you can see none of it came on under the inside, and there we are. That's all there is to that lever. Now I have a lever that I can use for reaching and dropping it in on top of the alcohol stove. And I'll just show you this for reference purposes. So this is one of my snuff caps that I have uh, used, or I have, do use on a regular basis. And you can see I did exactly the same thing here, which was to just fold a piece of this material after it was peeled and stick it down. Uh, this is a lot easier to get in without burning your fingers. Okay, I think I've shown you everything you need to do to make your own snuff cap and simmer ring. Uh, let's wrap this video up. So that was a fairly easy project, turning a tuna can into a simmer ring for use on top of the Lixata alcohol stove. Very effective. If you have watched the other video that I produced prior to this one, you can see me demonstrating this in use. And as I mentioned, of course, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video and in the video description below if you want to go back and take a look at that. So there's only one thing I would like to do to improve this, and I already have an idea in my mind, and that is could I some way combine both a snuff lid and a simmer ring in one? something very similar to what you might get with a Trangia, or in this case, a Trangia knockoff. Well, I think it's possible, and I'm going to uh, try, attempt that. Now, if it works out, then I'll bring it in a later video. Basically, the idea will be very similar to what we have here, where a flat lid 
is pop riveted onto the outside ring and allowed to, then you get full adjustment, of course, of how much flame you want uh, coming out. And in the closed position, it is a snuff sack or a snuff ring, a snuff cap, that is. So the question you may be asking yourself is, why didn't I just use one of these in the first place? Because you can purchase them for Trangias, at least. You can purchase spare snuff cap simmer ring combos and, and for your stove. Why didn't I just use it on top of the Luxata alcohol stove to start with? Well, it doesn't fit. It's not quite. It, it's almost, but it won't quite sit on top, so it won't work effectively. It'll sit there, but it, it, it gets knocked off too easily. So that's the reason why I wanted to come up with something that would not only fit properly, but would be very lightweight and very effective. It would pack away nicely. Okay. That's all I have for you in this video. If you have any comments on how I made this simmer ring, have any suggestions for improvements or alternative methods for creating a simmer ring, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.